So we're talking here about this overlying common creation of chronic illnesses from the buildup of toxic metabolites, and we're talking about free radicals, advanced glycation end products, as common toxic waste products built up from high calorie, low nutrient eating, right? Aldehydes, ammonia, uric acid and urea from excess nitrogen and excess protein, lots of toxins build up in your tissues. And now, you throw onto that the processed foods and the poisons and the chemicals and the dioxins and the PCBs and all the stuff and the, and the chemical, the toxic metals and, and fish, and then, you, then people that eat meat start to barbecue and grill and fry foods and you have you know, nitrosamino compounds and polyaromatic poly hydrocarbons and heterocyclic amines and we're getting arsenic now from brown rice and BPA from plastic liners and we have more toxic buildup in our tissues, right? Meat is bad enough. Fish is bad enough with toxic waste products. Even the polar bears have dioxin in their tissues from eating the seals that, are, that have become toxic from eating the fish that have mercury and PCBs. And then we've, we've dispersed these poisons all over the world. And they build up in biological systems. And the bigger the animal, because they're eating more smaller animals, the higher amount of toxicity is built up in that tissue. And the biggest fish have the most toxins built up in them. And when we eat those fish, we get the toxins built up in our bodies at the same time. But what I'm saying right now is that, sure, these toxins age us and create disease, but they also make us overeat. They also, because not, first of all, the major garbage dump in your body is your fat. Your body tries to pull toxins away from damaging your brain and your heart and tries to store it in your fatty tissue. And fat swells to help dilute the toxicity of the food you've eaten. When you go on a nutritarian diet with all these nutrients and people start losing weight, they lose a lot of water weight. They don't just, because you can only lose about a half a pound of fat a day, and these people might be losing 10 or 15 pounds the first week. I once had a person lose like 18 pounds the first week on the program. You can't lose fat that fast if they're dropping 18 pounds a week and they're losing a lot of water. And they're losing water because they're losing salt, but they're losing toxins, and the body doesn't need all the water to dilute all those toxins to dilute the toxicity, because without the water to hold dilute the toxicity, there's too much inflammation in the tissues. Your body puts, gets heavier to try to dilute the toxicity of the, tissue, of, the, of the foods you've eaten. And then, and then the high calories create a dopamine surge in the brain making you want to eat more food so you can't just eat one potato chip, you can't just have the one tablespoon of ice cream, you've got to eat the whole bowl of ice cream or the whole pint of ice cream, the whole gallon of ice cream. One burger's not enough for you, you've got to have a big ultra do duper, super duper big serving of french fries on top of it and then have a big soda, but a little big soda's not enough, you've got to have a super big soda now because you're a real food addict, but that's not enough for your stimulation. Then you've got to add alcohol to that and when that's not enough, you've got to take your opiates and when your opiates not enough, you've got to go get your illegal drugs too. Sugar and fast food is the gateway drug to more illegal and dangerous drug use. Why do we have so many drug addicts in this country? Because they started out with the food, being a food addict. And when you smoke cigarettes or snort cocaine, you're doing okay while you're pushing the stuff into your bloodstream, but it's when you try to stop the cocaine or stop the cigarettes, then you feel like you're gonna die, right? That's called detoxification or withdrawal. Are you better off feeling good by keep snorting cocaine? Or are you better off feeling bad and keeping the cocaine away? You're better off feeling bad and getting off the cocaine. Because feeling good means you're getting sicker, and feeling bad means you're getting better because it takes pain to throw toxins out of the body. The anabolic phase of the digestive cycle, the word anabolic means to build up. You're building up the body. It means you're taking the outside world and putting it into you and making it into you. It means you're eating and digesting food, in other words. You're eating food, you're digesting it, you're absorbing the outside world into your body. That's the anabolic phase. When your body's taking the outside world through the form of food and sucking it in and making you grow with that, you're not detoxing. You're not putting out waste products. You're not healing, you're not repairing, and you're not living longer because of that anabolic phase. It's when you stop eating and you're in the catabolic phase, and you're living, burning off those calories that you ate, 
and you're, dry, and you're utilizing that fat for sustenance, and you're breaking down toxins and removing them. What I'm saying right now is the body more effectively removes toxins when you're not eating food in the catabolic phase than it can in the anabolic phase while you're eating and digesting. When your body tries to self-repair and self-cleanse, it's going to do so and clean, cleanse itself and heal in the non-feeding state in the catabolic phase. That means I always tell people that the longer you live in the catabolic phase, the longer you live. Did you get that? You want to be eating all the time? How about 12 small meals a day? How about waking up in the middle of the night and eat then too? Eat 24 hours a day. I just put an IV right in. You can do it 24 hours a day. The sicker you are, the more unhealthy your diet, the more of a food addict you are, the more it's uncomfortable to stop eating. The more you've built up toxic waste products in your body, when you try to stop eating and enter the catabolic phase, you feel fatigued and weak and shaky and even mildly depressed, even mildly anxious. You don't tolerate not eating. You're only feeling okay when you're eating. Just like the only person is only feeling okay when they have a cigarette going. The minute the a couple of hours go by and the nicotine goes down, they've got to light up another cigarette. The minute your level of nutrients, the minute your calories go down, the minute you've used up those calories, and you're no longer putting it in, you're starting to start to detoxify, you start to beginning to heal and repair, it becomes too unbearable, you feel too ill, and you have to keep putting food into your body. You've discombobulated your apostat, and you're not eating because of hunger, you're eating because of what I call toxic hunger. Because see this curve, the glucose curve, when you eat a meal, the glucose goes up from the calories you consumed, and then you finish chewing, and you finish digesting, and a couple of hours later, it's finished absorbed, to be absorbed, and then you get down to that baseline, of your baseline glucose level, where you're not absorbing calories anymore, and then you have enhanced detoxification or repair. The liver tries to deconjugate toxins, make them water soluble for excretion of the kidney. Your body's trying to heal itself, but you can't tolerate that. You don't feel well enough when that happens because you're too toxic. You start to feel shaky, irritable, stomach cramping and headachey, and a little bit fatigued, and you feel better if you eat another donut or cookie or soda or marshmallows or, or M&Ms or, or whatever there is you're putting in your mouth. You have to have food with you all the time. You have to keep eating all day long, stuffing this monster that you've created from all the junk food you've eaten, and you're driven by toxic hunger, and your life is now controlled by your addiction to food, not by you anymore. You're not in control of your life. You live, you're, this monster, this detox monster forcing you to put food in to just to feel okay is controlling your life, and you have to become overweight. If, you were, if your diet was nutritionally adequate and you weren't toxic, then you, when you hit the meta catabolic phase and you stopped digesting food, you would have felt nothing. You wouldn't have felt hunger because there's no biological need for calories. You wouldn't have felt shaky or weak or headachey or stomach cramping. Those are not symptoms of hunger. Hunger is felt in the neck and the throat, and it's not strong, it's mild. It doesn't, so here's what I'm saying. If you waited when you hit the catabolic phase so your body burned off all the glycogen in your liver, in other words, your glucose came in, you stored it as glycogen, and like you burned down the candle, the wax of a candle, over a period of time after digestion ceases, you burn off that glycogen until it's going all the way down, and as you burn off halfway through the glycogen, the body becomes more effective at burning fat. You don't even burn much for fat for calories, for energy because your body preferentially takes the glycogen first. Most people, they're burning some glycogen, or maybe hardly any, and they start eating again. They never get to burn fat off their body. If your, diet, if your the nutritional quality of your diet is high, and you start to remove those high amounts of free radicals in your tissues, then when you hit the catabolic phase, you're not driven to overeat. These symptoms driving you to consume calories lessen and eventually disappear. You no longer are forced to overeat. And then what happens is when glycogen stores get low, it gets replaced by true hunger when glycogen starts to running out. And true hunger is felt in the neck and the throat, and it's pleasurable, and it's accompanied by dramatic enhancement of taste. So come into my office, and somebody comes in and brings me a, a bowl of this really nice soup, and they said, hey, Joel, you want this really delicious soup recipe I just made? I want to try it. It's fantastic. And I'll say, I'd love it. Thanks so much. But I'm not going to eat it now. 
let me put it away, and when I'm hungry, I'll eat it then, because I'll enjoy it more. I'm not going to feel like eating now when I'm not hungry. My body is already a precise computer, because hunger dictates to you, within 25 calories a day, the exact calories you need to maintain your lean body mass. Hunger doesn't exist to put fat on your body. You couldn't have become overweight in eating in response to hunger, just like the deer and the squirrels and the rabbits in the woods don't become overweight in eating in response to hunger. Because they don't eat when they're not hungry, they only eat when they're hungry. Humans only eat when they're hungry, too. A little kid in a natural environment of natural foods will, won't eat, will only eat food when they're hungry, when they're young, until the parents perverted their taste and felt that, oh, the child's too thin, they're not eating enough food, we've got to entice them to eat more, give them some milkshakes and give them some you know, cheese boot doodles or whatever it is. And then once the kid gets a feeling of that, then they start not eating any food anymore, not eating any real food anymore. All because the parent thought the kid wasn't, getting, being, wasn't eating enough food because, they're, because they weren't eating when they weren't hungry. You following this? You've been ruined by your parents. They didn't know any better. Can't blame them. But you've got to stop this vicious cycle of self-destructive behavior with, with food. So what I'm saying here is that true hunger becomes a precise computer directing you to the right amount of calories and you could not have ever become overweight unless you have eaten outside of the demands of hunger because of toxic hunger, emotional eating, or recreational eating. You can't become overweight. True hunger doesn't exist to make you overweight. It only exists to protect your lean body mass because it only kicks in to prevent the breakdown of muscle tissue for energy. Are you following that? So this is all about toxic hunger leading to overeating. And most Americans go from one anabolic phase to another because they don't like the way they feel unless they keep the food, they keep the digestion going, which they can keep digestion going all the time just by eating a lot of meals all the day long. Or they can just eat a lot of animal products, which take a long time to digest, and they can just keep the animal products coming in because you don't get out of the catabolic, you don't get out of the anabolic phase because it takes so long to digest them. When a cat kills and eats an antelope, they might be digesting that food for a whole 24 hours or more. They don't want to kill another antelope the next day, they're still digesting the first antelope they eat. Like when the python or the alligator eats a big animal and they stick there and digest that food for a whole week. You know what I mean? So we can go on these high animal product diets so we don't, to keep us out of the catabolic phase. Uh-oh. The Anim the animal product diet kept us out of the catabolic phase. Well, that's going to shorten our life because we can't clean and repair anymore. And we're no longer being supplied by phytochemicals and antioxidants anymore. So you're learning toxic hunger is withdrawal and stomach cramping and headaches and spasm and being irritable. Fatigued. Fatigued is not hunger. You don't eat to keep your energy up. Those love the people that say, oh, I need to eat before I work out to keep my energy up. Yikes. If you were eating right, you would have energy all the time at the same level, and you'll always be full of energy whether you're eating or not. You don't need to eat food to keep your energy up. You're only fatigued because of toxic breakdown of tissue, because, you're, because you don't have enough nutrients in your tissues. You don't need calories for energy, because you can, build, you can burn fat for energy. Why should you be, why should an overweight person need food for energy? They've got enough energy for the next six months on their body. You don't need to eat to keep you. I, you know, I come home from work and I'm starting to get hungry. I get a call from a buddy on the phone. They say, hey Joel, you want to play some tennis? The court open up. Great, I'll go play tennis. I don't have to eat because I'm hungry. Hunger's not so uncomfortable. And the minute you start exercising, it goes away anyway. I'd much rather play tennis than eat food. I can eat food later. It's the difference. You're not going to die if you don't eat. People always say, what do you do on a plane? What do you do on this? What do you do on that? What do you do? I carry food with me or I don't eat. What's the big deal? What, are you going to die if you don't have your pizza? <laughs> True hunger is a mild sensation in the mouth and throat. It's accompanied by increased salivation and dramatic increased taste sensation. Right? It makes food taste good. Us nutritarians prefer to eat episodically only when we get hungry.
You'd rather not eat. And you know what? The less frequently you eat, the longer you live. The, particularly at night. Let me say this one more time so you understand this. The most important catabolic phase to maintain that extends lifespan is the length of hours at night without food. And the time of day, the best time not to eat is the hours before bedtime. You want to have three or four hours before bedtime so you go to sleep on an empty stomach. You extend your lifespan by having a full 14 hours of no calories coming in at night. You, but it's better, not to, it's better not to skip breakfast. It's better to skip dinner. It's better to eat an early dinner or a lighter dinner and go to bed on an empty stomach. Let me say that one more time, a third time. If you want to use this knowledge to enhance your lifespan and live longer, you want to eat a lighter and earlier dinner and go to bed on an empty stomach. Not being turning over, not feeling food regurgitating up into your throat when you're in bed at night. Sometimes I try to caloric restrict at night. I try to eat an earlier and lighter dinner. And just as I'm going to bed at 10 o'clock at night, I'm starting to feel hungry. What do I do then? Nothing. I go to sleep. <laughs> I just extended my lifespan. I'm slowing my metabolic rate. It's an anti-aging phenomenon. Trying to live longer by getting, so you want to get hungry. I love those people that say, oh, my diet's so good, I'm losing weight and I never get hungry. You're losing weight, you never get hungry? If you're losing weight, you never get hungry, either one of two things. Either you're chronically overeating, because you want to get hungry to be able to regulate your appetite and your appetite of how much you're eating. If you're never getting hungry, you're always overeating. Or your diet is so poor, like with a lot of animal products, you're always in a catabolic phase and you're, and, you're not, and you're not allowing your body to detox. So if you're never getting hungry, there's something wrong with you. You're not healthy. You're supposed to get hungry. To get hungry is a healthy, good thing. We want to get rid of toxic hunger. We don't want to get rid of real hunger. We want ha real hunger to have. The reason diets don't work is because people aren't focusing on the nutritional quality of what they're eating. To lose weight safely, permanently, and achieve optimal health for the rest of your life, you've got to focus on eating for nutritional quality and for health. The weight loss part will then take care of itself. You've got to eat an anti-cancer diet. That's the only way to lose weight safely for the rest of your life. Why not just eat to live? Why not just eat to live better and longer? You follow me? Because you're going to like what you get used to eating anyway. And the last 30 years, my work is really well known for devising recipes that are fantastically delicious with natural foods. You're not giving up pleasure in life. I know your friends and your family are people going to say, oh, just, if I had to eat like that, I'd rather be dead right now. Just shoot me. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're your biggest saboteurs. They're your, right? They want to sabotage you because they're food addicts and this threatens their addictions. Some people I know are listening here and are getting this and are, it's helping them and other people are like, this is annoying them. <laughs> They'd rather not hear this information. You have to, I guess, be ready for it. The fact that you're here, though, means you're probably ready for it. You know? <laughs> My books don't sell very well in New Orleans, I'll tell you that. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I just got an invitation to go down there and speak to a college down there, you know what I mean? They, um, but, you know, people all over the world are starting to wake up, I think. How much death and dying and suffering can you see and not open your eyes to this? You know what I mean? People are dying all around us. And we have these food deserts where the obese diabetic in areas of the country without proper food access and, vet, and, and um, supermarket access to bread, fruits and vegetables, some of the years of potential life lost are tragic and disgusting and evil. People are dying 45 years prematurely. You know what I mean? It's destroying people's, it's destroying people's lives. Fast food kills people. This food issue, I'm passionate about it, and I don't fool around about it, because this is dangerous stuff. This is like shooting people with bullets. It's like radiating people. It's like 
blowing them up. All right, let's review some studies here. The changing perception of hunger means we took more than 700 people and we put them on a nutritarian diet. And these 700 people following a nutritarian diet lost over 500 of them. Not all of them followed the diet perfectly, but those that followed the program 90% or better lost their addictive drive to overeat calories. Just because they started eating so much healthier, it made them naturally want to eat less food. And eventually what happened was, within six months, they started to prefer eating this way better or as much as their old diet. They lost, they lost that, they lost their weight, they lost a lot of weight, but here's what was most important. They lost their addiction over time to eating those processed foods. They started to prefer eating a healthy diet over time. When a patient comes to see me in my office, they sit down across the desk, and I'm looking at this person with some medical, with these list of medical conditions, list of medications and problems, and I say to them, a lot of things, but I say to them, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to decide what you like, what you want to eat, what you think you should eat, or what you learned of what you learned. I just want you to eat what I tell you to eat. And don't decide whether you like it, and I don't care if you like it or not. Just do it. Because what you've done based on you, what you liked, didn't work too well for you, did it? That's why you're so sick. And what you like is based on what you do, and it takes months of doing something to like it, and you're not going to like this program better than you're old than what you're doing. And you're not giving it a fair chance to see what it can do for you unless you really do it. You can't do some modification of it that you created. It has to be what I want you to do. But I promise you, that within six months, you'll love it. Not within six weeks, within six months. It takes time to reach. You can't get well overnight. You can't expect your food preferences to change overnight. But they do change. Us nutritarians aren't, don't have willpower of iron. We're not eating, to, and we're not eating bad tasting stuff to suffer with life to live longer. We're not going around hungry all the time to live longer. We're eating when we're hungry. We're eating what we feel like eating. We're eating what we want to eat. But what we want to eat and how much we want to eat is the right stuff because we've trained ourselves to like it. We're eating what we like to eat the best. And I like my food the best. You may like your food the best, but I can have you and I can teach you how to make healthy diet be the one you like the best. But that takes some effort and time and some dedication. But it's worth it. It's not that much dedication. It's called a no-brainer. Got to be insane. Eat like other Americans. So here's that study that showed that people following a nutritarian diet lost a lot of weight. And they kept losing weight. And they kept it off. Not like other studies where people gain it back again.